the way he said filth, that's how you know that one comes from the heart. That's bigotry that comes from the soul, actually. That comes from the soul. I haven't heard somebody, I haven't heard somebody that vitriolically bigoted in, in quite some time. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. Conservatives usually like to hide it down a little bit, but nah, he's he's letting it fly. The other day was Super Tuesday. There's a lot of stories that came out of Super Tuesday, both fun and interesting, both wacky and goofy. There's lots of things that happened. Uh, Biden won a resounding victory against literally nobody. Donald Trump was finally able to shake Nikki Haley off of his tail. So the thing that we were all expecting to happen did finally happen. But one thing I wasn't looking at was something very interesting. And it's a story in a state that I want to talk about that we haven't talked about in quite some time. I want to take a look at little at the little state of North Carolina, the supposed swing state that's usually pretty reliably Republican on the national stage. But I'd like to talk about a little guy named Donald Trump first. Listen, Trump's been having it hard recently from the hundreds of millions of dollars that he's being uh, that he now owes to court and so, and women who he has done wrong in the past uh, to fraud cases, to the likelihood of having some of his properties repoed, maybe even this, maybe even Lizard Lake Towen comes and takes the, uh, the, the Trump jet. Who knows? OK, lots of terrible stuff happening. All right. And so obviously a lot of his supporters are having to take up some of the slack to help out their mans. OK. One of his problems was support a, 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 among black people. So instead of actually earning the support of black people, they just made their own with AI. Trump supporters target black voters with fake AI images. This is not a real picture. Donald Trump has never taken a picture with this many black people in his entire life. <laughs> but it wouldn't stop them. It, it wouldn't stop them from trying. OK, but it seems like Donald Trump needs to do this no longer. Because in North Carolina, something incredible, remarkable, insane happened, even, and that was the 2024 gubernatorial election for North Carolina. Their current governor is term limited, so they, he can't run anymore, and he's a Democrat. And so it's an open seat in 2024, and obviously you're, you're going to have a Democrat and Republican running. On the Democratic side, we have a little guy. His name is Josh Stein, one with 69.9. <laughs> of the vote. Don't let Elon Musk see that. And Mark K. Robinson with 63% of the vote. And I want to talk about these two guys and specifically Mr. Robinson here, because this is the um, this is the lieutenant governor for North Carolina and also an incredibly wild man. OK, with a real connection to Donald Trump in one of the most insane ways I've seen in the country possible. This is a guy that Donald Trump said was actually Martin Luther King, but on steroids. At a rally in, in a rally Saturday in Greensboro, Trump compared Robinson, who was black, to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and said he's MLK on steroids. He's like MLK, but like really, 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 he's like super MLK. If you think he's supercharged MLK, really, it's, it's, it's quite wild. This man, this man, better than MLK, all right? Donald Trump, he was better than Lincoln. He was better than Washington. Robinson is is better than MLK, if you, if you really think about it. Honestly, you might not even need... Maybe if you're woke, you need to think about it because you're so dumb. But if you're a God-fearing patriot, you would instantly, intrinsically... It's like a baby. It's like a baby bird jumping from their nest for the first time. You would instinctively know, just like how to fly, just like how to fly, that this man is better than uh, MLK ever was. So true. Jack, can I get a so true? Anyways, with that being said, I want to take a look at who MLK on steroids actually is. I want to take a little dive into what who this man is, where he came from, where he's going, and what he said, because I feel like we're going to get a little bit more context into that MLK quote right now. Let's take a look. This is something that MLK on steroids said in 2020 when he was running for lieutenant governor. A few days ago and asked her, what America are we going back to to make America great again? The one where women couldn't vote or black people were swinging from cheap trees. I would say to him if I was standing in front of him, I absolutely want to go back to the America where women couldn't vote. Do you know why? Because in those days we had people who fought for real social change and they were called Republicans. A few days. 
I'm okay, everyone. He's back. <laughs> he's back. Oh, he's back. Oh my, oh my gosh, he's never. MLK has never been more back. Yeah, so that that was him in 2020 as he was running. That, that was him in 2020 as he was running for, as he was running for lieutenant governor, which is a mostly ceremonial role. You do almost nothing as lieutenant governor. Um, it, it's kind of like vice president, but you do even less, actually. And he won. He won that seat. He actually 100% won that seat. But where did this man come from? Uh, and where did he start his political career? Let me tell you a little bit about him. All right. This guy started to be to, to hit the conservative scene back in 2018. He was a furniture manufacturer who went um, who had a viral speech in North Carolina when he was talking at a city council meeting where he said the normal drivel that you can imagine the conservative says when it comes to guns. There was a law that there was that was being talked about to help restrict guns, to help stop gun violence. And he said the same thing you normally always hear these people say guns guns save my life a gun a gun saved my cat from a tree back when i was a youngin the bloods and the crips won't put down their guns so why should i i'm a i'm a law abiding citizen so i should be able to have as many guns as i want basically basically that but he was yelling it right and he was black too so obviously the republicans were like holy huge catch and they decided to put this guy on an NR on put him on the NRA payroll by giving him by, by giving him a real seat on the NRA for being so pro gun after that literally two years later he parlayed that into being the lieutenant governor and he just won he just won he, he ran as lieutenant governor and simply just won just because of that that's it that's all he did he was just like, I love guns. I'd, I'd have I'd impregnate a gun if I could and have like Shrek like donkey dragon hybrid gun black boy babies. If I could, I'd f my gun. <laughs> and he and they were like, holy crap, this guy is he's so sick. I want him to be my governor, my lieutenant governor. And so he just was. That's just kind of how it is. But uh, lieutenant governor was a really high role, a role that came with a lot of nothing to do, but a role that came with a lot of publicity because you're pretty close to the governor. Uh, with that being said, this guy has a lot of ties, a lot of really weird ties, okay? Ties to even the Unification Church where he had a, where he had a, a sit-down interview with the Unif Unification Church leader, Moon, the guy who wears like the bullet crown and everything and says he's going to be king of the United States. He had a, he had a little, a little mishap uh, back in 2020 when he was running for the Lieutenant governor where, where a, a couple weeks out, this interview came back to bite him. Uh, the Republic, the, sorry, the Republican candidate for Lieutenant governor voiced agreement with a religious leader who says that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are the Rothschild family of the international bankers that rule every single central bank, the CIA, China, and Islam. <laughs> what? Yeah, very strange man. The conversation is part of an interview that Mark Robinson did in 2019 with the pastor Sean Moon, whose father, Sun, Sun Myung Moon, founded the Unification Church, which some have called a cult. It is a cult. It is 100% a cult. I don't know why he was down in North Carolina because uh, because um the unific they're they're like they're 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 like cult is stationed in Pennsylvania. But he decided to have a little sit down interview with him, and obviously he got a lot of criticism for this. But instead of being like, oh no, I'm sorry, like a normal politician would, he said that the that the media was trying to punish him for being a black God fearing American instead. End quote. At no point in the interview does Mark talk about the four horsemen, uh, and in the statement was made by the interviewer. Mark goes on to talk about how our culture, particularly the media, despises Christianity and the Bible. The campaign manager went on to say he also said that he would not say sorry for the things that he said, and he went on to go criticize homosexual. He went on to agree with Moon about the idea that homosexual churches were destroying Christianity. And how they should cast out all, 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 all weirdo, poo-poo hole having, sex having gays 
from their congregations as much as they can. But if that's not it for you, I would like to touch on a couple other things that he said uh, as lieutenant, a couple other things that he said while as being lieutenant governor and also back on this Facebook. So you know when a weirdo conservative like this has a Facebook account that you're in for just pure evil, right? Well, let me show you how bad it gets. From Muslim invaders to transgender delusion, let's take a little look at the lieutenant governor of North Carolina's Facebook posts and comments over the years. Back in 2020, he said he won't apologize for any comments he posted on Facebook over the over the past couple years. He said, and quote, I'm not ashamed of anything that I post, he told the TV station. So just keep this. Just keep that in your mind. He doesn't apologize for anything that he's about to say. So let's take a look at some of the things that he said. He said people. He said that people who support mass delusion called transgenderism are trying to turn God's creation backwards and make it into a sickening image of rebellion to glorify Satan. So if so, if you like the little blow high shark. Congratulations, you're ushering in Satan or something, I guess. Makes literally no sense, but but let's continue on from this absolute delusion. Uh, he said and this. I'm going to tell you, prepare yourself for this one. He also said that the popular popular movie Black Panther was created by an agnostic Jew and and put to film a say uh, and put to film by a satanic Marxist and was only created to pull the shekels out of your schwarze pockets. If you don't know what this word means, it is a racial slur against black people. Oh, uh, sorry. It is, yeah, it is a racial slur against black people in Yiddish. Specifically, this is it. You know, you know how you can tell if somebody's really racist by how much they know about a certain like group of people that they hate. You know, like you know, level one racist is just being like, oh, "This toast is so black, it stole my bike." And level one hundred racist is talking about the warrior gene genomes in the sub-Saharan African bloodline and and skull shapes and all this type of like we all, all this type of racist lingo you've never heard of in your entire life and is pulling up like weird charts this is this is the type of stuff i'm talking about i've never heard the word schwarza okay and you probably haven't either this is advanced racism this isn't normal racism chat this is advanced anti-semitism that we're working with right now <laughs> this is this is advanced this is advanced anti-semitism but don't worry, he, do, he, do, he doesn't just leave it to uh, the Jews. He also picks up with the Muslims as well. He said Muslims refuse to assimilate to our ways while, dissent, while uh, demanding respect that they had not earned. He also argued that, I that immigrant that so he also argued that Muslims are not immigrants, but they are invaders looking to destroy the country. He criticized black voters for supporting the Democratic Party, given its past racist stances. He says that they're voting for the very people who have abused them throughout history. And that's what happens when Negroes don't read. <laughs> yeah, what? Listen, here's a quick, quick meme. Who does the KKK vote for now? That's a little question. Who, do, who does the KKK like now? All right. I'm not going to disagree that, yeah, like the Democrats were more likely to be a, like a, a pro slavery party. I'm not I'm not going to disagree with that. That's true. Yeah, but we don't live in like 1652. We live in 2024. You are a Negro dumbass. Oh, that's what happens when Negroes don't read. Apparently this man, I don't know, man. I, I feel like this guy has never read in his life. Or maybe he's he's just reading the wrong things. That's how he found the word Schwarza and can apparently belt it out whenever he wants. This is this is something he knows about. Shouldn't he like the KKK? They hate Jews too. Listen, he he dodged that question about whether or not we should go back to the America where black people were swinging from trays. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe he is all in for it, you know. And he's he's just gonna be one of the good ones. It's possible that he's just gonna be one of the good ones. He's gone. He's got. He's been given enough leeway by by the whole whites to do whatever he wants. It's possible. What kind of shit is this? Don't worry, we're not done yet. He also referred to Michelle Obama as a man and uh, Barack Obama as being a worthless anti-American atheist who wanted to bring the nation to its knees. 
Ace also said that Joy, Joy Behar is a she beast. And that U.S. Representative Maxine Waters was, quote, old maxi pad Waters. <laughs> he's, he's, oh man, Uncle Robinson's really cooking them Dems this time. The lieutenant governor serves as the, on the state board of education and the board of community colleges and the chair of energy policy. And just to put the little icing on the cake, yes, he also believes that climate change is not real. No, he thinks that climate change has never been scientifically proven, and sometimes it's just like hot. And by sometimes, I mean every year it's progressively hotter for some reason. Who knows? Maybe we're in global. Maybe the global is warming, but it's like the ice age. But it's the anti ice age right now, or something. I don't. I don't even know. State. It's the deep state. They left the heater on. <laughs> Obviously, they want you to eat the bug, right? Right. Even though bug populations around the world keep dropping, who knows? Who knows what's happening next? Who knows what's happening next? And if you and if you thought that was it, like the cherry on top was all no, actually, because there are also sprinkles, dumbass and whipped cream, because he also attended the open NC protest last spring and said that it was a globalist mark. It was a globalist uh, way to shut down America and the world by by, you know, the powers that be, maybe the Rothschilds, to be able to, uh, that wanted to shut down America for their own personal gain and take away our rights. You have given all your rights to me. <laughs> uh, and just so you know, he won as the lieutenant governor in, in the race against this nice, against this nice woman named Yvonne, who, who wanted to build, um, what, who wanted to build on her biggest accomplishment in the legislature which is a grant program to put fresh produce in convenience stores that are located in food deserts. And, and this man who, who thinks that Black Panther is Jewish propaganda, the, uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic was put through to make Donald Trump look bad by the globalists who want to take away our rights, who said other terrible stuff. And once again, we're not done, okay? You're like, Shark, what more can you fit on this Sunday? Don't worry, I'm getting out another goddamn bowl. Because he continues on, and he's actually quoted Hitler before, too. You may have heard this about him. Robinson said last month that we need to absolutely protect life from the point of conception, and then he gave the game away and talked about how we got it down to 12 weeks, and the next goal is to get it down to six, and he said he wants to just keep on moving from there. It just keep on going down until it's nothing. Maybe negative abortion as well where you just force people to give birth just straight up forcefully impregnate them who knows who knows that's possible but only the good ones as you can see maybe just go straight up with eugenics at that point he's described the covid19 pandemic as a globalist conspiracy to destroy donald trump even though trump absolutely loved the pandemic because he had he was able to do project warp speed in 2021, he criticized efforts to teach LGBTQ issues in sex education, referring to transgenderism and homosexual people as filth, specifically. Wait, can I pull this up? Do they have that quote there? They didn't play the video? Are they dumb? What, are they stupid? Anybody, anywhere. Yeah, here we go. There's no reason anybody anywhere in America should be telling any child about transgenderism, homosexuality, that filth. Made the way he said filth, that's how you know that one comes from the heart. That's homo that's homophobia. That's bigotry that comes from the soul, actually. That comes from the soul. I haven't heard somebody I haven't heard somebody that vitriolically bigoted in, in quite some time. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. Conservatives usually like to hide it down a little bit, but nah, he's he's letting it fly. He's letting it fly. He also went on to say that he he called people who were gay equivalent to quote what the cows left behind as well as maggots and flies just straight up dehumanization straight 100 dehumanization and these are the type of people that they're going to tell you that we need to like we need to reconciliate around we need, we need to all come together you know the people who want to live a normal life and the people who want to put you in austin birkenau anyways he implied at a campaign event last month that transgender women should be arrested if they use the restroom Basically, what he's referring to is a is 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 a 20, I think 2016 North Carolina law that made it illegal for trans people to use the bathroom that fits their gender identity. That actually got repealed. The reason why it did is because so many companies pulled out of the state 
that it completely destroyed North Carolina's economy. And they literally had in the uh, and the Republican um, legislature literally had to rescind the bill um, and repeal it because it did so bad. And on top of that, it led to the Republican governor back then losing his election against the now Democratic governor. It was that bad. He wants to do that again as governor, basically destroy the state. Wild, wild stuff. But hey, listen, he continues on. He continues on. All right. In 2014, he then quoted Hitler on Facebook in a statement about racial pride. He defended the post in the speech last July, saying that quoting, uh, quoting the Nazi leader doesn't mean you support him. All right. He said, quote, because you quote Hitler, you support Hitler. He said, I guess every history book in America now supports Hitler. They all quote him. Brother needs a book. I don't know if he at this point, I'm not sure if he could read it. I'm not sure if he can even do it. OK. I'm not I'm not sure if he can even do it. And yes, as, as the cherry on top to the new Sunday, the second Sunday that we made, uh, he is 100 percent anti-abortion. He wants it completely illegal, even in cases of children being assaulted. He does not care. He wants to force that 10 year old, that eight year old to give birth if, if they've been impregnated. That's just it. He believes they deserve it. It's it, it's a gift. And he's going to make sure that that he's going to make sure that 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 kid dies in childbirth as much as he possibly can. But he's now had to revert his language on it a little bit after it's become such a hot button button issue is the one thing that he's decided after all the anti-Semitism, the weird racism, all the type of the, the, um, the homophobia, the transphobia, the misogyny. He backs up on this one, which is abortion. And if you're wondering, yes, his him and his wife did actually have an abortion. So it's it's abortions for me, but not for thee. He had he had one and they were able to to yeet his fetus. But everybody else, nah, you're you have to be locked in. So this is what we're dealing with right now. Josh Stein, uh, who, if if he wins, will be North Carolina's first Jewish governor versus Mark Robinson, which could be uh, which would which would be North Carolina's first Uncle Ruckus governor. It's wild what what the Republican Civil War has done, because even the people running against Mark Robinson went out to say, guys, if this guy wins, we're going to lose and we're going to deserve it. That you may recognize that that's reminiscent of what Lindsey Graham said about Donald Trump back in 2016. And he was right. He wasn't right immediately because Donald Trump won then. But the fallout from that was Republican losses for the next for the next the 10 years. And it might be even more than that. It might actually be much more than that. But that's what we're dealing with right now. It is Adolf Hitler versus Bland Normie Dem. Probably Josh Stein, probably one of the most normie, just unoffensive Democrats you've ever seen in your entire life versus actual Blitler. Hitler 2.0 come to life as a North Carolina black Republican incredibly wild stuff. But this is what happens when the Republicans slowly become more extremist over time. They are a completely extremist party that only appeals to the fringes of even their own party. But Republicans are just so incredibly lockstep and they hate uh, the Democrats. And even and even the entire party has lurched to the right since Donald Trump's inception and, and, and his, you know, spark onto the scene that this is something that they're kind of fine going with. Now, will the average North Carolina voter also be fine going with this? I don't really think so. There's a high possibility that this guy will lose. But with that being said, it's only really a possibility because remember, this is North Carolina. I said only a possibility because remember, at the end of the day, this is still North Carolina, the largest swing state in the country that's usually um, reliably Republican on the national stage and when it comes to their governorship. Well, and, sorry. And when it comes to their governorship, but not so, sorry, that's usually Republican on the national stage and has incredibly close governor elections, but that usually go towards Democrats. And if you were wondering what the polling looks like between these two, Stein and Robinson, well, the newest poll has Robinson up by one. This is the other state of the Republican Party right now. Now, this poll was done before the election, before Super Tuesday, um, a little while before, actually, about a month 
uh, sorry, not, not about a month, about mm, 20 days ago. The so better part of a month. The polling has been back and forth between Stein and Robinson. Robinson's been up by one base in a, in a st statistical tie with Robinson. The entire time there was one where Stein was up by four and another one where Robinson was up by four. Another one where Stein was up by two. That was back in November. So, so that's where we are right now. Actual, actual Hitler versus Bland Normie down. Let's see what happens. This is one of the races that I particularly want to watch because this is really going to tell us a lot about how the Republican Party is right now, how radical they are and what they're going to be OK with when it comes to who they elect and where they draw their line and that place might be nowhere oh sorry i didn't see you there if you're enjoying the content hit the subscribe button if you don't it'll make boo very sad i know a bunch of you who are watching are not subscribed join the frenzy you won't regret it <laughs> thank you boo